Good morning everyone and welcome to our class, Art Appreciation. We are now on the week 6, module 6, under still chapter 3, the aesthetics, the study of art and beauty. And today we will study or we will learn the Eastern art and the, philo uh, the Filipino aesthetics worldview. To begin, we have the learning outcome. We have to classify the Eastern view of beauty and the Filipino sense of art according to its time period. Of course, we have the references. Okay, here are the readings that you are going to read. Okay. And the video to watch, no? Introduction. Since Eastern aesthetics is traditionally concerned with the art of living, Eastern philosophers may prefer to use the term living aesthetics or aesthetics of living. Um, Eastern philosophy, okay, Eastern philosophy is concerned more on the way of life, okay? They are concerned more on the way of life. So that's why um, as we study Eastern aesthetics, it is true that um, Aesthetics is also a way of their living. Aesthetics is also part of their everyday life. Okay, so they acknowledge the presence of aesthetic throughout the human experiences. Okay. Let's have a trivia. Did you know that painting started from prehistoric man? So, prehistoric men used the red ochre, okay, and the black pigment, okay. It often showed hunting scenes of men chasing various animals were drawn on the walls of caves, block of stones, etc. Some are found in China. So, every time, okay, every time they chase uh, various animals, okay, pag pinatay nila yan, okay, they will get the blood, Okay, they will get the blood, tapatutuyuin nila yun, tapos yun yung, yun yung ginagamit nila for paintings. Yun yung mga materials na yun. for example, the red ochre and uh, black pigment. So, ito yung mga ginagamit nila para sa kanilang pagpinta. Okay? So, just the trivia. So, let's proceed to the different or the painting subjects of East Asian countries. Let's have Japan. What are the painting subjects of Japan? Okay, it could be the scenes from everyday life. It could be the narrative scenes crowded with figures and details. Okay, so ito yung mga subject nila pa every time they paint. No? Ma different scenes, uh, scenery, no? mahilig sila dyan. How about China? Ano yung mga painting subjects nila? So, mahilig sila sa mga flowers and birds. No? Pag nagpipaint sila, dapat meron mga flowers, meron mga birds. Okay? And it should be in the landscape orientation. Okay? Palaces and temples. Hindi mawawala yon Yung mga palaces, yung mga temples. The human figures. Okay? Animals as well. The bamboos and stones. Okay, because later on, uh, we will show you different uh, different uh, paintings no, na nandoon talaga kasama itong mga ito na binabanggit natin. No, yung mga subjects na yan. And they have really explanation as to why uh, they are um, putting the subjects in their painting. Let's have the country Korea. Ano naman yung mga subjects nila pag sila ay nagpipaint? Again, it should also be in the landscape paintings. Minwa, or the traditional folk painting. And there are four gracious plants. The plum blossoms, orchids, or wild orchids, chrysanthemums, and bamboo. Okay. Portraits. Okay. <clears throat> so, what are the important aspects that we have to remember in East Asian painting? 
Landscape painting was regarded as the highest form of Chinese painting. So every time you see a Chinese painting, it should always be, uh, it should always be in the landscape painting, in the landscape orientation. Why? <coughs> the Chinese term now for landscape is made up of two characters, meaning the mountains and water. So kung baga, yun yung, yun yung representation ng landscape, no? It's always uh, mountains and water. Bakit? It is linked with the philosophy of the wisdom, which emphasizes harmony with the natural world. So, kaakibat nito, kaakibat nito, yung harmony, no? Yung harmony sa nature. That's why it is always in the landscape painting. Okay? Because it means mountains and waters. So, here, the three concepts of Chinese arts, we have the heaven, the earth, and the humankind, or the yin yang. Okay? Ano ba tong yin yang? Okay, so this is the yin yang. You see, it is, uh, the painting is in uh, the landscape orientation. Okay? <clears throat> yin yang, it's a male and female. Okay? Yang, let's proceed to yang. Yang represents the light, the bright, and the sun. Okay, strong, assertive, dry, hot, fire. So, yan daw yung mga characteristics ng lalaki. No? Positive charge. So, meaning, siya ay heaven. Okay? So, yung mga lalaki represents heaven. Okay? Kasi nandoon yung light, nandoon yung bright, nandoon yung sun. Okay? How about the yin? Okay, yin represents dark, moon, uh, recessive, nurturing, damp, cool, water. Okay, sila yung nag-denurture. Sino yun? Sila ay yung mga babae. So, tignan mo yung mga characteristics ng yin, no? Mga babae. They are recessive, no? They are cool. Sila yung nag-nurture. Sila yung water. Okay? So, if yang is a posit uh, positive charge, yin is a negative charge. Okay? If yang is heaven, yin is earth. Diba? Sa feng shui, no? sa feng shui, uh, nininiwala talaga sila sa mga, <coughs> nininiwala sila dyan sa mga, um, sa negative vibes, no? mga positive energy. Okay? Yan yung mga pinaniniwalaan nila sa feng shui. No? <coughs> okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So, what are the important aspects in East Asian painting? Okay. Silk was often used as the medium to paint upon, but it was quite expensive. Kai Lun invented the paper in the 1st century AD. The invention of paper provided not only a cheap and widespread medium for writing, but painting became more economical. Okay. This is Towa in Korea. Okay. So this is the winter landscape by Shuto Sansu Seshu in Japan. Okay. Alright. Uh, naka naka portray lang. No? Naka portray lang yan. Kumbaga, uh, the way the way we see it in the cell phone is in a portray orientation. But But it is uh, when you look at uh, when you look at the whole painting, okay, the whole painting it is it is in the landscape, okay, it is in the landscape orientation, okay. So yan, oh, di ba prominent? Makikita mo yung yung mga mountains, yung river, okay, because they are um, landscape orientation again. It characterizes uh, mountains and water. Okay. 
So these are the important aspects in East Asian painting. The ideologies of Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism played important roles in East Asian art. Okay, so <clears throat> the idea of Confucianism. No, Confucianism is more on uh, nature. Okay, so it's more on nature. The wisdom emphasizes harmony with the natural world. Okay, and Buddhism is, uh, again, as I have said, Buddhism, um, uh, the philosophy of Buddhism, it's a way of life. Okay, so itong tatlong ito, yung idea nila, played an important role in East Asian art. No, pag kinumbine mo silang tatlo, they really played a necessary necessary role in East Asian art. <clears throat> Chinese art expresses the human understanding of the relationship between nature and humans. Okay. This is Shenzhou. Okay, there um it is the poet on the mountain. Uh, okay, in China. See, notice it is in the landscape orientation. Again, another important aspect in East Asian painting. The history of Korean painting dates to 108 or 108 CE when it appears as an independent form. It is said that until the Joseon dynasty, the primary influence of Korean paintings were Chinese paintings. Okay, mountains and water are important features in Korean landscape painting because it is a site for building temples and buildings. Landscape painting represents both a portrayal of nature itself and codified illustration of the human view of nature and the world. Okay, let's have calligraphy. Okay, what is calligraphy? Ano ba itong calligraphy? Okay. To the Chinese calligraphy, to the Chinese calligraphy is the art of beautiful handwriting. Okay, so this is the art of Chinese calligraphy. Okay, yung kanilang uh, uh, writing, no handwriting. Traditional painting involves essentially the same techniques as calligraphy and is done with a brush dipped in black or colored ink. Oils are not used. Kasi pag oil, ang ginamit, uh, medyo magkakalat-kalat siya. So, it should be, it should be a natural, uh, natural black or colored ink. Okay. In using calligraphy. In calligraphy, the popular materials which paintings are made of are paper and silk. Okay, so yun lang yung materials na pwedeng gamitin using, if you are using calligraphy. Okay, the paper lang, tapos silk. No, silk paper. Okay. Poets write their calligraphy on their paintings. Yan, no? Okay, so those are, yun na, no, yung mga calligraphy. Okay here paintings can be mounted on scrolls such as hanging or hand scrolls album sheets walls lacquerware folding screens and other media so doon yung makikita usually yung mga calligraphy no? na sinusulat ng mga poets <coughs> okay so these are the examples yan no Yung mga hand scrolls, album sheets, lacquerware. Okay. Alright. So, ito yun yung uh, hanging or hand scrolls. Okay. Let's proceed to Kangji. <clears throat> Kangji is the legendary inventor of Chinese writing. He got his ideas from observing animals, footprints, and birds claw marks on the sand as well as other natural phenomena. Okay. So, different naman siya from calligraphy. Okay. 
Excuse me. Okay, let's have architecture. Okay. Why do temples and buildings in China, Japan, and Korea have sweeping roofs? Okay, so hindi lang yan, nilagay dyan, hindi lang yan uh, dinesign na merong sweeping roofs. No? Uh, meron yan siyang purpose kung bakit siya uh, ganyan. No? Kung bakit ganyan yung design, bakit ganyan ginawa yung architecture, yung architectural design niya. Okay? <coughs> East Asian temples and houses have sweeping roofs because they believe that it will protect them from the elements of water, wind, and fire. Okay? So, di ba, sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, eh, tayong mga Asian, no, we, we, especially Chinese, they, they firmly believe on the feng shui. Okay? At doon nila tinitignan sa, sa apat na angulo na yon, no, the water the earth, the wind, and the fire. So, four elements na yan. Okay? So, for them, sabi nila, itong mga sweeping roofs na to, sila yung nagbibigay ng protection from the four or from the elements. Okay? The water, the wind, and the fire. Okay? Yan, tingnan natin. No? Buddhists believed that it helped ward off evil spirits, ward off evil spirits which were deemed to be straight lines. Okay, yun naman yung paniniwala ng mga Buddhists. No? The figures at the tips are called roof guards. Ito, no? makikita mo. Yan. So, para silang mga security guard. No? At the tip, meron doong mga figures, maliliit na figures. Okay. And sila yung tinatawag ng mga roof guards. No? To protect. To protect yung isang temple. So, what are the main types of roofs? No? In the architectural design, they have, <coughs> excuse me, straight inclined. Yan. Okay. Straight inclined lang siya. Uh, it is being said, as it is more economical for common Chinese architecture. So these are the main types of roofs, multi-inclined. Okay. Alright. Roofs with two or more sections inclined. Okay. They are used for residences of wealthy Chinese. Okay. So, ano lang siya? Roofs with two or more sections inclined. Wala pa siya mga roof guards. No? So, may another main type of roof. The sweeping. Ayan na yung sinasabi natin kanina. No? Okay. Uh, sweeping is usually in, found in the temple. No? Temple building. They have curves that rise at the corners of the roofs. Usually reserved for temples and palaces. Okay, so those are the architecture in the Eastern, no, especially in Chinese. Let's have woodblock printing. Woodblock printing is a technique for printing text, images, or patterns used widely throughout East Asia. Okay. <clears throat> it originated in China as a method of printing on textiles, but eventually became a method for printing on paper. This method was adopted in Japan during the Edo period in 1603 to 1867 and became one of their oldest and most highly developed visual arts. Okay, tignan natin yung woodblock printing. Yan, no, this is an example of the woodblock, woodblock uh, painting. Uh, this is the Great Wave of Kanagawa, okay, painted by Kanagawa Okinami, Nami Ura. Okay. Yan, another example of the woodblock painting. 
Alright, these are another examples of the woodblock painting. Okiyo-e, this is the best known and most popular style of Japanese art. Um, Japanese for pictures of the floating world. Okay, Okiyo-e is a picture of the floating world. Okay. It is related to the style of woodblock printing or woodblock print making that shows scenes of harmony and carefree everyday living. Okay. Let's have theatrical performances. Okay, tayo mga Easter, mahilig din tayo pagdating sa mga um, theatrical, no? theatrical performances. Okay. <clears throat> Paintings in East Asia do not only appear or do not only apply on paper, silk, and wood. Okay. They also have face painting, or we also have face painting. <clears throat> face painting uses their faces as the canvas for painting. Okay. Uh, ang tawag sa Japan, it is kabuki. Okay, kabuki. In China, it is the Peking Opera. For Korea, it is the mask painting. Okay. Ginagamit nila yun para sa mga performances nila sa teatro. Okay, let's take a look at the Peking Opera, no? the face painting. Okay. This is the Peking Opera by Ching Julian Pu. Okay. It is done with different colors in accordance with the performing characters, personality, and historical assessment. Okay. So, ito yun, no? yung Peking Opera. Sabi chan, it is used in accordance with the performing character's personality. So, kung ano yung, yung character mo, no? Character mo sa isang uh, scenario, dapat yun din yung ipapakita mong costume. Okay. This is the Peking Opera of Jing Ju Lianpu. It is a traditional special way of makeup in Chinese operas in pursuit of the expected effect of performance. Hold on. Originally, Lianpu is called the false mask. Okay. So, what are the meaning of colors for face painting? Okay. Guan Chu. The red, the color red indicates devotion, courage, bravery, uprightness, and loyalty. Okay, we have Wang Pang. Yan. Yellow signifies fierceness. Okay, fierceness, ambition, and cool headedness. We have the Zhu Wen. Okay, it is a green face tells the audience that the character is not only impulsive and violent, but he also lacks self restraint. This is the Zhu Wen. Zhang Fai. Zhang Fai, the color is black. Black symbolizes roughness and fierceness. The black face indicates either a rough and bold character or an impartial and selfless personality. Zhang Fai. Lian Pu. The color is purple because it stands for uprightness and cool headedness, while a reddish purple face indicates a just and noble character. Another color is Kao Kao, the white. White suggests treachery, suspiciousness, and craftiness. It is common to see the white face of the powerful villain on stage. We have Jiang Gan. Okay, the color is, is actually Okay, the clown. Uh, actually, Zhang Kan is the clown or Chu or Chao in Chinese opera. And it, it has a special makeup patterns called uh, Shao Haolian or the Petty Painted Face. Okay. 
Sometimes, a small patch of the chalk is painted around the nose to show a mean and uh, secretive character. At times, the Shaohalian is also painted on a young page or jesting to enliven, to enliven up or to enliven up their performance. Okay. Gold and silver colors are usually, hold on, let me check, are usually used for gods and spirits. So take note that gold and silver, they are usually used for gods and spirits. Let's have Kabuki makeup of Japan or the Kisho. Okay. It is already in itself an interpretation of actor's own role through the medium of uh, the facial features. Okay. Take a look at the Kabuki Kabuki makeup. Okay, the Kisho. So what are the types of Kabuki makeup? We have the standard makeup applied to most actors. Kumaduri makeup, it is applied to villains and heroes. Okay. Yan. It is composed of uh, very dramatic lines and shapes using colors that represent certain qualities. Okay. The dark red symbolizes passion or anger. Dark blue. It symbolizes depression or sadness. The pink, it symbolizes youth. The black symbolizes fear. The light green, it symbolizes calm. And the purple symbolizes nobility. So those are the colors in Kabuki. Okay, let's proceed to Korean masks. Korean masks called tal, okay, or tal, originated with religious meaning just like the masks of other countries which also have religious or artistic origins. Okay, yan yung picture na Korean mask. Korea has a rich history of masks. They use it in the funeral, funeral services to help banish evil spirits and theater plays dating back to the prehistoric age. So, technically, uh, the Korean mask, they use it in a funeral services. Mm -hmm. Para daw mawala, no? To help banish the evil spirits. <coughs> okay. Masks were also used for shamanistic rites. Okay, by the 12th century, the masks became part of elaborate dances and dramas. Kinamit na rin siya later on sa mga uh, uh, theatrical performances. No? The roles of colors in Korean masks. Black, red, and white. Okay. What does it symbolize? It symbolizes bright and vibrant colors that help establish the age and race of the figure. The half red and half white mask. It symbolizes the idea that the wearer has two fathers, Mr. Red and Mr. White. The dark-faced mask. Okay. It indicates that the character was born of an adulterous mother. Some masks have moving parts like winking or shifting eyes and moving mouths. To further add to the lifelike features of the mask, Black fabric is draped from the top of the mask over the uh, over the wearer's uh, wearer's head to simulate or to simulate hair. Okay, let's proceed to the paper arts and knot tying. So, what are the paper arts of China, Japan, and Korea? So, who invented the papers? Paper has a great function in the development of arts, not only in the East Asia, but all over the world. Paper was first invented by Kai Lun of the Eastern Han Dynasty in China. It is, indeed, it is indeed one of the greatest contributions of ancient China in the development of arts. Okay. 
Ayan, no? So, parang meron siyang uh, naka-embedded na mga uh, mga paintings sa mga paper. Okay, this is our, our uh, these are the knot tying. Okay, di ba ginagamit din natin to sa mga feng shui? Sa ngayon, no? Alright. Mga pampagood vibes, no? Uh, for protection, okay. Yung color red, they are, <coughs> excuse me, they are, yung, they are fond, no? They are fond of, um, um, using the red color because uh, it symbolizes um, power, okay? So, it is powerful to drive away uh, negative uh, vibes, to drive away evil spirits, okay? So, yun yung mga paniniwala, no? yun yung mga belief ng mga uh, feng shui experts, Okay, so these are made of papers. Okay, take a look. And this is art. Okay, you see? <clears throat> this is the paper arts of China. Okay, the earliest document showing paper folding is a picture of small a paper boat in an edition of Tractatus de Spera Mundi from 1940 or from 1490 rather by Johannes de Sacrobosco. Okay, we have the burning of Yan Bao. In China, traditional funerals include burning Yan Bao, which is a folded paper that looks like gold nuggets or ingots. Okay, called Saisi. Okay, this is the burning of Yan Bao. Okay, it is also used for other ceremonial practices and is commonly done at their ancestors' graves during the ghost festival. Okay, so this is uh, common for uh, the feng shui. No, this is common for the feng shui. Uh, they they have ghost festival. I think every uh, every October, something like that. Mayroon niya silang month na no? na talagang ghost festival. Umaabot na isang linggo. Sai si. This is a type of silver or gold uh, ingot currency used in China until the 20th century. The name is derived from the Cantonese words meaning fine silk. Okay. The paper folding Sai C. Okay. The gold paper is folded to look like a Sai C. Okay. So, yun yun yung kanina, na? Ayan siya. Okay. So today, the imitation gold saisis are used as a symbol of prosperity by Chinese and are frequently displayed during Chinese New Year. Okay, di ba kanina, ang pinakita lang natin doon yung paper, kung paano siya, paano siya gagawin. Okay, pero ngayon, uh, inimitate na siya, no, to be a gold saisis because it is used as a symbol of prosperity, no? Mga Chinese. Tapos din display siya during Chinese New Year. Okay. Pampaswerte, no? Let's have origami. Okay. What is origami? It came from ori, meaning folding, and kami, meaning paper. Okay. This is the traditional Japanese art of paper folding. Okay. We are now in... in Japanese, no? Japanese uh, um, art, okay? Uh, Japanese art of paper. It started in the 17th century AD and was popularized, popularized internationally in the mid-1900s. 
The goal of origami is to transform a flat sheet of paper into a finished sculpture through folding and sculpting techniques without cutting as much as possible. We have the paper crane. Paper crane is the best known Japanese origami. Okay. Yeah, I don't know during your high school, no, because during my high school I was able to experience origami. Okay. Here. It is actually used for decorations, no? Decorations siya, no? Uh, so, ibig sabihin, may purpose talaga yung origami. Okay, so the purpose is for decorations for any occasions, not like wedding, birthdays. Okay. Yan. Alright, and you see there are different colors and it is an art. Okay. You see yeah and until now it's still being done still being used okay diba e even mga recycled especially if it is recycled mga paper they would do it like this we have the paper cutting Usually, it is symmetrical in design when unfolded. It adapts the 12 animals of the Chinese zodiac as themes and motifs. Mostly chooses the red color. Okay. The process of paper cutting is aided by a pair of scissors or knife and other sharp flat cutters. Okay. Ito yan siya. No, the paper cutting. Uh, usually, makikita mo ito mga design na ito being put in the uh, design para sa paper bag. Okay. I have seen this one. No, nilalagay nila sa, sa Malaysia. No. Nakita ko doon one time. Okay. So, Chinese Buddhists believe that hanging window flowers or decorative paper cuttings attract good luck and drive away evil spirits. Yes, I, I do have this kind or I do have this one in my room. No, sa aking uh, bedroom. Okay. Or minsan doon sa aming main entrance. No, we, uh, we put it there. Okay. Again, uh, the decorative paper cuttings, it attract good luck and drive away evil spirits. And again, the color. Take note of the color. It is red. Janzi. Okay. Janzi. Janji. This is the first type of paper cutting design since paper was invented by the Chinese. The cutouts are also used to decorate doors and windows. They are sometimes referred to as shuang wa, meaning window flower. Okay, let's have kite making. Okay, kite making. Ito yung saranggola sa atin, no? This, a kite is an assembled or joined aircraft that was traditionally made of silk or paper with a bowline and a resilient bamboo. Today, kites can be made out of plastic. Kites are flown for recreational purposes, display of one's artistic skills. So... Um, pwede mong lagyan ng art no hindi lang yung basta nag ano ka diyan na mga mga plastic tapos merong mga bamboo no kasi sa atin ganun na no but you can use uh, you can put a decorative art okay chinese kites originated in when uh, in weifang sandong According to Joseph Needham, kite is one of the important contributions of Chinese in science and technology. Okay. Yeah, so these are the different categories of Chinese kites. We have the centipede, centipede kites, you see. Hard-winged kites, yan. So see, uh, the, ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na um, you, you can put a decorative art. Okay. Soft winged kites. Yeah. Very nice. Flat kites. Okay. Alright. We proceed to the knot tying. 
In Korea, decorative knotwork is known as made up or called jurei or double connection knot, often called Korean knotwork or Korean knots. Okay. So let's see if there is a difference between uh, Chinese knot tying okay, and Korean. Uh, so it's almost they are almost the same no they're almost the same okay so in japan the knot tying is called hanamusubi it emphasizes on braids and focuses on individual knots okay so let's have an analysis of aesthetic terms according to filipino anthropology Kovar, pagkataong Pilipino, and the concepts of labas and loob. Yan yung uh, konsepto ni Kovar, no? Um, pagkataong Pilipino, and the concepts of labas and loob. Hey, Hokano naman, it is uh, the Filipino aesthetic worldview. We say worldview, a way people look at the universe or the people's picture of the universe that lies deep in the heart of a culture. A culture is a system of symbols and meanings people use to organize their ideas which they express through language. Language contains words that carries culture. Okay, so... Analysis of the meaning of words in a language is analysis or is analysis of the form of culture on which lies people's worldview. Okay, so these are the dimensions of Filipino worldview, the natural, biological, communal, social, normative, ethical, moral, aesthetic, the theological, and ideological dimension. Okay, so dito natin titignan kung ang dimension na tinitingnan natin in Filipino worldview ng beauty or ng art. Okay? So, dito natin titignan um, from these dimensions of Filipino worldview ng, uh, ng beauty. Okay? Okay, how do we define ganda or beauty? Ganda is about the totality of the person. Yung kanyang pagkataong panlabas, which is the physical appearance, at syempre yung kanyang pagkataong panloob or the social behavior. Ganda and beauty are interchangeable terms so that whatever is maganda is also mabuti. Nakuha natin, uh, whatever daw is maganda is also mabuti. Maganda is equivalent to mabuti. Aesthetic taste involves moral judgment. Again, aesthetic taste involves moral judgment. Okay? That's why ganda, or kung meron kang kagandahan, dapat equal yon sa iyong kabutihan. Okay? Pag maganda ka, dapat ikaw ay mabuti. Okay, so equivalent. So that's why there is an aesthetic taste that involves moral judgment. Okay, de ba? Um, okay lang na, okay lang na, de ba? Minsan sinasabi natin, okay lang na, na hindi ka maganda pero dapat maputi ang loob mo. It's still there is an involvement of moral judgment. Okay. Sabi natin kanina, this is how you look at beauty. Diba? This is how you look at beauty, the absolute and absolute and relative. Diba? On our previous discussion. Ito ang pananaw mo sa tao na hindi naman siya kagandahan. Pero dapat mas maganda kung may kabutihan din ang kanyang kalooban. So, Ano yung pipili? Siyempre, dapat maganda ka na nga, pero dapat maganda rin or mabuti yung iyong kalooban. Maganda rin yung iyong kalooban. Okay. So, yun, no? Kanina yung sinasabi natin. 
Aesthetics of Filipino Personhood. Okay, you can watch it by yourself. Okay. Okay, so what are the categories of ganda? Okay. We have dilag, alindog, and trikit. Okay, when you say dilag, it is gorgeousness. Okay, under the dilag, meron pa yung mga categories. No? Riangya, dingal, or magnificence, inam, or goodness. So, yan yung mga categories niya, no? <coughs> under inam, we have kisig, we have gilas. Okay. Alindog, if you are maalindog, you are charming. No? Ikaw ay malambing, ikaw ay maamo. No? That's why meron mga maamo yung mukha. Okay. Meron din mga malalambing. And that is under the category of alindog. No? Ikaw ay malindog, ikaw ay ma charming. Rikit, you are lovely. Okay. Under rikit, you are makinang, radiant, and ningning. Okay. So under makinang, meron pang kintab. No? Ikaw ay kumikintab, ikaw ay kumikislap. No? Luningning. So iyan ang dami nating mga categories of ganda. Okay, nandiyan yung mga explanation. Okay. Okay, the phenomenon of ganda as an affective phenomenon, ganda is judged in terms of the emotion or the sentiment it invokes from the perceiver. Okay. Nakakabighani, okay, nakakaakit nakakatawag ng pansin. So, it invokes from um, the perceiver kung ano yung kanyang sentiment na nakikita sa iyong kagandahan. Nakakabighani ka, no? nakakaakit ka sa so, nakakatawag ng pansin. As an olfactory sense phenomenon, ganda is judged through scent or sense of smell. Okay? Pag, di ba, minsan um, uh, may naamoy kang ang bango na kanyang pabango and minsan ay ang ganda niya kasi mabango siya. Di ba? Parang ganun yung ating connotation. Pag mabango yung isang tao, then we feel we feel her as maganda. It feels or it it feels or smells clean, malinis sa plusin or amoy malinis. So we 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 generally categorize them as maganda. Diba? Okay. As behavioral ethical phenomenon, ganda is judged in terms of action, public appearance, or human relation o gali. So, pag ikaw ay mahinhin, ikaw ay mabait, ikaw ay magalang, then that's an equivalent to maganda. Diba? As a physical phenomenon, ganda is judged as a concrete entity with physical attributes. So, makinis, pag makinis ang balat mo, no, maamo ang muka, matipuno ang katawan mo, you have the healthy body, matikas ang tindig, then you are, no, you are termed as maganda. No, you are termed as maganda. As a capability phenomenon, ganda is judged as the ability to perform work or do things. Masipang magtrabaho, magaling magluto, mahusay kumanta, no? Then, you are associated with maganda. Ikaw ay maganda, ikaw ay guwapo, no? Pag magaling ka magluto. Okay? So, here, no? Pag tinanong mo, pag tinanong mo yung, yung, uh, kaibigan mo, no? Oh, kumusta yung yung, hindi ko pa nakikita yung boyfriend mo, no? Gwapo ba siya? Ah, oo, masipag magtrabaho, no? Pero, ganito pala yung itsura niya. Okay? Ah, oo, uh, mahusay siya magpaint, ang galing-galing niya. We well, cannot directly tell the person uh, that your boyfriend eh, looks like this. Tama? Or your girlfriend would look like this. ba? Diba? Uy, hindi ko pa nakikita yung girlfriend mo. Patingin nga. Ah, ah ano lang siya? Okay naman siya. Ah, marangya. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, she is referring to this kind of face. Okay. Ay, marikit siya. Okay. Ay, maalindog. Okay. So, because this, that is how we define ganda. Okay. So, here, no? Fernando Morsolo said, the, the woman 
or the women I paint should have a rounded face. Ganito niya raw, uh, ganito niya raw, uh, is inilalarawan ang kagandahan ng isang Pilipina. Okay, it should have a rounded face. The eyes should be exceptionally lively, not the dreamy or the sleepy type. Okay, tignan mo, medyo buhay, no? Buhay ang kanyang mga mata. The nose should be of the blonde form but firm and strongly marked. This is the ideal Filipina beauty and should not necessarily be white complexioned nor of the dark brown color of the typical Malayan but of the clear skin or fresh color type which we often witness when we meet or when we met a blushing girl. Okay, so this is how uh, he described a a dalagang Pilipina, uh, the ideal Filipina beauty. Okay, so here, the fruit gatherer by Amor Solo, the painting of Amor Solo, the fruit gatherer, the woman in tobacco field, okay, the smiling palai maiden. You see, take a look at the eyes, okay. So, the girl taking a bath, the, uh, the girl in a bath, okay, the dalagang Pilipina. Okay, uh, sabi dito ni Hokano, no, the Filipino worldview, all societies have aesthetic standards for appreciating things. This appreciation is essentially a collective formation deeply embedded in symbols and meanings of society. So, sabi niya, Ganda may be viewed not only as an emotion experienced in the encounter of what is pleasurable, but also as a particular cast of mind out in the world of objects. Okay. So, uh, try to reflect. Okay, try to reflect on the words of Hokan on the Filipino worldview. Okay. Now, for your activity, you will have an individual activity, okay? You can use any of the following medium in the painting. You have the black or the brown coffee, okay? So, you can use the black or the brown coffee, the instant coffee. You can use also the charcoal, the gumamela flower extract, azuete, or any color, uh, colorful leaves or vegetables and fruits, uh, different colors or flower pot, Okay. Now, you have to make a Horvaki painting that shows the Filipino concept of space and beauty. Okay, um, you review, you know, you review the module 9 because it is there. Yung mga uh, paintings, no, yung example ng paintings ng Horvaki. So, using, using the following mediums, okay, using the following medium, rather, you have to choose... Okay, you have to choose from this medium and you make a Horvaki painting that shows the Filipino concept of space and beauty. Okay, so try to review a hor the Horvaki. Number two, make a minimalist painting that shows the Japanese concept. Okay, we have examples of minimalist paintings in your module 9 also. Okay. So, write your selected verse or message in calligraphic style, then affix your nickname at the right corner below your artwork with the use of Chinese, uh, Chinese brush or water color, or Chinese brush and water color. Okay, so that this is your number three uh, individual activity. Uh, any selected verse or message, and then you have to use or you have to write it in calligraphic style. Then, you have to affix your nickname at the right corner below your artwork with the Chinese brush and watercolor. For example, yan. Okay, so here, you have to affix your, your name. For example, this is, uh, we, we can do no great things, or we can do no great things, only small things with great love by Mother Teresa. Okay. Okay, so please be guided by the rubrics for your activity 3. Okay, and then please be ready with your chapter test. Okay, so that ends my presentation for today. Okay. 
for our topic, the Eastern art and the Filipino aesthetics worldview. Well, thank you so much for listening. Do have a great day.